Texas public schools educate the brightest young students across the state. To keep up with those students, a, a young generation that just continues advancing technologically on a knowledge base, it's also imperative that educators keep themselves in tune and keep themselves up to date with what's going on and find new ways to engage students. That has never been more true than it is currently in the Garland ISD and at Walnut Glen Academy. Hello everybody, I'm Chris Moore. Welcome to another edition of School Scene and let me welcome a special guest that we have with us today, Walnut Glen Principal Alex Rivera. Thank Alex, you, Chris. Thank appreciate you. you coming over and being with us today, actually having us here in your school. It's a pleasure. I mentioned that this is an academy, it's an elementary school. But why don't you tell our viewers about the academy setup? I know this is one of three academies in the school district. Tell us a little bit about how you guys differ from your traditional elementary school. Yeah, we have a fantastic opportunity here. Um, Aside from advanced curriculum, uh, especially in mathematics, we are a grade level ahead in math. Um, we have programs such as fourth and fifth grade orchestra, which students can take on to the middle school and high school arena. We also have uh, lots of opportunities with enriched art, enriched music for students that qualify. So aside from all of the great programs that we have here for all the GT students, we're still part of the great GISD community and really just a part of all the other schools. We just try to really enhance that for the GT students and it's, it's just a great place to be. So you guys are different from the, from the academic realm, the academic setup within the GT and the Magnet program. But beyond that, you're doing some really neat things in the classroom with exercise balls yes. in place of chairs. Tell us about that program and how that came about. Well, the exercise balls is a really neat program. Um, last year when I was uh, observing some of my teachers, I was noticing great lessons. However, I didn't see enough movement in the classrooms. And as you know, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of research that shows that there's childhood obesity issues in our, in our nation. Um, so aside from that, we wanted students to be able to be more engaged. You know, with the new STAR testing and things like that, we, we wanted to raise the rigor, but I wanted to raise the engagement at the same time. So that's where the exercise balls come in. Every morning we do uh, an exercise video to warm up the body. We get the blood flowing, so active body, active mind. Uh, we do a lot of cross body movements uh, because brain research has shown that if you cross your body, that's center line, you engage both hemispheres of the brain. Lots of things that we try to do. So teachers have access to those videos throughout the day. So if the students are kind of losing their focus a little bit, they can just pop in a video. The students do a quick two or three minute video and they're often going again. So it's just been fantastic for us. We do it pre-K through five, even the little ones with help from our wonderful PTA. We have pre-K and kinder exercise balls and they absolutely love it. How long have you guys been using that program? We started that last December um, and it, it has just taken off and we are school-wide. It is just fantastic. School-wide and you, you still give students the option if they would yes. like to have a traditional chair but that's not been an issue it's been embraced by everyone correct it really hasn't been an issue and, and that's a good point uh, we don't force these exercise balls on the students but however just like reading when a teacher presents it in the proper way and incentivizes the kids in the proper way and they show excitement just like we want them to show excitement for reading the exercise balls it's the same thing and and while this district does not hang its hat entirely on testing scores there are levels of accountability that we have to track. It's our responsibility teaching kids to make sure we're doing our job. You guys have the scores to support that what you're doing in the classroom is in fact turning into positive results on, on testing and the knowledge base and the retention that your kids are having. And that's a very good point. When we actually started last year, our fourth grade team was the pilot uh, grade level and they actually started the day of benchmark testing last year. And what some of our teachers notice is that during the writing benchmark, the kids would stop writing look up in the air to think and start bouncing and then they would stop start writing again and go on so the exercise balls have not affected anything as far as academics that we're doing here if, if anything it has enhanced the uh, ability for students to focus and stay with the lessons well Alex man we appreciate you having us over here today we're gonna see a little bit more about these exercise balls hear a little bit more about them later in the program but we certainly enjoy you having us at Walnut Glen keep up the good work and uh, maybe we'll be back one day in the future thank you it's my pleasure the Best Foundation is a program that has helped schools throughout the district, much like Walnut Glen, with different programs. Uh, they recently had their annual gala where they gave away more than $32,000 in scholarships and grants to teachers and to departments throughout the district. The Best Foundation, what, what we're designed to do for a school district is to raise money, raise funds that would not be covered by normal state or local funding to, so that we have funds available for teachers, 
for staff or departments for creative ideas they may have to expand ideas, stay on the cutting edge of training. Uh, most foundations, as best when they start off, are small and they focus on giving grants, classroom grants to teachers because you want to put money in the teachers' hands. And we do that and we've done that quite well. And that seems to be where you grow. And as we started to expose what the foundation does to our districts, it, it grew through the support of the teachers. I mean, people still today wonder what BEST does. And, and they've seen us come around and give teachers grants. Well, since we started, not only do we give classroom grants to the teachers twice a year, uh, we also give teacher scholarships. We want to encourage teachers to uh, be involved with continuing education, to be a better teacher, to be an, a principal, to be a superintendent someday. And we want to encourage that because we feel as long as they're learning, they're improving, and that affects our children. Another area that we looked at is people that are overlooked sometimes, the paraprofessionals, the secretaries and support people to the principals and directors. Um, they have continual training needs as well to stay certified and we want to encourage that. We try to focus on not leaving any single group out of the, of the support that the foundation does. We've hosted breakfast meetings for transportation, for nurses, uh, we want to try to be able to affect everybody so when we go to them for our annual campaign there's a reason for them to want to share because some people might say why should I give a dollar or I'm, I'm not with a teacher but it's just to support overall what we do. When we started 11 years ago when I came on board we held no official scholarships. Today we house more than 51 scholarships totaling over $340,000 and that's to students and teachers and that expands every year. We do memorials or in honor of. We were involved in the building of the Curtis Colwell Center. There's a walkway out front with memorial bricks for graduates and teachers and that's just an ongoing sort of a thank you, a payback to the district where people can recognize each other. Um, we're always looking for new ways to be involved through the community. Our Teacher of the Year program for the last several years has been a partnership with the Texas Rangers and as their popularity has increased that's become a, a real uh, event that people look forward to in our district. Uh, we work with the Mavericks to get special discounted tickets for teachers and various other organizations. A lot of people want to be able to give back to the teachers and students and we try to help facilitate that through the foundation. I originally started for the, the district as a volunteer. I volunteered for 12 years and, and I just got hooked. Um, my degree was in education out of college, but my career path took me another way. So to be able to come back into the classroom where my first calling was and to give teachers money and stimulate their creativity, I, I consider it the best job in the district. I go out to people and find ways to raise money for teachers. It's really not a hard sale when you ask people to support children and their teachers because everybody will fall behind those. As much negative as you hear about them, 99% of what goes on is good in the classroom and great. And we just try to show that to people and show them a way to be involved. Um, every day is different. And normally in a school district, I'm not like a principal or director. When people see me coming, I'm usually bringing them money for their classroom. So it's a, it's a neat feeling uh, to be able to support the teachers in that way. Wow, 20 years in existence and the Best Foundation is still doing a big part in helping teachers throughout the district and giving back to them so that they can supply their classrooms and, and reach more students. One specific program within the CTE area that's recently caught hold in the district is the culinary program at Garland High School. They went and competed at an Iron Chef North Texas cuisine competition and fared well as you're going to see here. I thought it was wonderful. It was like our first time competing. We practiced pretty hard. It was, I think it was a really good experience. It, it showed us a bit of everything. Leadership, skills, um, maturity. You know, you have to keep your time up and everything. So I think overall it was a really good experience for us. It was a great experience actually. It's something that really opens up your mind and see that anything can actually happen just with a little more hard work and preparation. The difficult part was time. Um, time was the key because 
you can do everything at your pace, but once you're there, it's like, come on, we have to finish this. We have five minutes to put it on a plate, present it, and so timing was the part that really was hard. We had a, I think like it was like an hour, uh, an hour and a half or two hours to prepare everything, but we, we got in the nick of time. I like cooking. I like going home, cooking, make me something to eat when I don't get hungry. Right here too, it's a new learning experience. So, all oh, the experience is amazing. I can just, my first time, now, you know, we didn't come out winning, but if I had another chance, we'd do it, we'll win. We'll bring that championship home. Uh, as a team, I think we did very good. Uh, for our first time competing, we had, uh, even the judges, they told us we were pretty good for first timers. Uh, and as a team, we kept our time good. We were, we were on time with all our dishes. Uh, we had a little trouble, like they told us before, but I think there's things we can work on, and we can do that. It was a lot of stuff because um, they gave us three secret ingredients, but they didn't tell us what it was going to be. So we had to bring stuff to prepare with our apples and oranges and beets, and we had a menu set for each of those. So we had to bring like a lot of stuff just to prepare. Ooh, a lot of bowls, a lot of knives, a lot of um, cutting boards too, a lot of them. Um, a lot of prep time went into it to get everything correctly. I like um, working with appetizers, you know, soups, salads. I like doing that because you get to like make it really nice and pretty. And I like the presentation side of it too. To be real honest with you, we're starting several new things this year in culinary arts. We have an internship that we're doing and so I was able for the first time to have all of my practicum or second year students in the same class. And so I had an idea who I wanted to take from last year because they were in here last year and I could see their skills, see how they progressed and developed and matured. And I just selected from that. I was really pleased about some of these children, the way they stepped up. I think the competition was a really good venue for us to showcase uh, what we're proud of here. Um, the school districts have a chance to shine because a lot of times the culinary programs are tucked over away from the general area of the main part of the school and not very many people know what really happens now with the Iron Chef going on on, on the Food Channel and the Food Network and all that like that. They're more familiar with actually what goes on in the kitchen a little bit because of the popularity of this right now. Um, Food has been around for a very long time, and culinary arts have been around for a very long time. But it's just now begin, beginning to be very popular. And I'm glad some of these people are realizing how hard this really is, and how much dedication and how much work that it really does take for these kids to excel. And I'm very proud of it. I really think that some of these kids really need to be commended because the team that won, they'd been together for a while, you could tell. and. They're just amazing. They're high school kids. And they're doing all this wonderful stuff. And I think it's really a feather in their caps because they have showed the tenacity to excel and go on. And even if they don't go on and study culinary, this is a real good background for them because they're always gonna have to eat. Lots of good cooking going on at Garland High School. That group just barely missed earning the best cuisine nod at that North Texas competition. And they recently held an on-site version as well where they uh, created their own dishes and put together some things for their personal portfolios. Construction's been a common theme throughout the district this year. You don't have to travel far to see an improvement, uh, a new building, some renovations that are underway, including that at the former Darty Elementary School site. Let's take a tour around the district and see how those projects are, are coming.
We do not want to get out of here without welcoming our new superintendent to the district, Dr. Bob Morrison. Trustees had Dr. Morrison over at a specially called meeting to announce him as the superintendent of the district. He comes to Garland after serving in Mansfield for more than 10 years. Welcome, Dr. Morrison. We, we look forward to getting you out and about and, and, and meeting the teachers and the students throughout the Garland ISD. Thanks for joining us on another edition of School Scene. We'll see you soon.